Good afternoon. It's me, Taz, from Taz's World. Uh, welcome to the channel. Now, um, today I'm going to do a two month uh, review of the Ferrum Forge Mass Drop or Drop We Buck, which is here. Obviously. So, we'll just get on with this. We'll pop that in the background. Um, okay, so I've had this for two months um, and I've used it for, uh, for all kinds of different things food prep uh, wood carving breaking down boxes all kinds of cutting tasks and it is it excels at you know most of those things um, or all of them it is S35 VN which is uh, superior to S30 in that, uh, I'm trying to move a little bit closer. There we go. Um, S30 has a problem with chipping, and S35 uh, does not, apparently. Um, I haven't had any issues with chipping on this player at all, and um, it's worked perfectly well. Now, um, there is a lot of titanium real estate in this, so, so you're actually getting a lot of titanium in your. Um, and I love how the backspacer and the clip are done um, in a nice blue, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and I could see how there would be a hell of a secondary market for modifications for this particular knife, because you could replace these, uh, these backspacer um, quite easily in the clip. Um, the handle, if the handle was a little bit on the fatter side, but that's just a personal observation that I've had with this knife. Um, you know, I mean, my hands wrap, it wraps quite around like that, so if the handle was a little bit fatter, I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, look, this is a great knife. You know, uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, it's a flipper. It runs on uh, bearings. Um, and generally it's pretty, pretty flawless. Um, it's one thing this thing really excels at more than anything else is fruit prep. Um, because of the blade geometry and the handle geometry, um, it's quite good at that. Um, and what I mean by handle geometry is, for example, we just get a block of wood here. Is you can see that when you cut with it, your knuckles are right up out of the way. So you can actually get quite a bit of cutting space. And um, yes, this is the part where I'm going to massacre an apple. Um, so as far as cutting goes, um, this knife is really excellent in things like draw cutting and slash cutting. Or, or what would you call that? Horizontal cutting. Um, <clears throat> So as far as fruit prep goes, this is really good because you can cut quite easily through all these things. Um, generally, you don't find your fingers really getting in the way because of the blade geometry. Now, if you're cutting straight down, you see I was able to hold that and cut straight through there without any issue. Um, and, you know, you can do very, very fine cuts with it. Or, you know, you can go chunky. Um, and, you know, for example, if you wanted to you know, chop and I don't know how well it will do it this part. But it will. Yeah, you know, so it's and because of the blade geometry, there's nothing in the path, there's nothing in the cutting path, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's got a piercing tip, and for something like fruit, it's not an issue. Um, I don't know about like, uh, I, know, I could probably go through a, go through a, uh, Yeah. 
not really having any issues with any of this. Um, there are, aha. Awesome. Anyway, let me move this out of the way now. Um, no, something like you should probably always do if you're using your favorite pocket saver to cut up food, you probably wipe it down afterwards. Yeah. Um, well, it's got some jimping here. This jimping is actually really aggressive. This feels like 40 grit sandpaper. Um, and it'll tear a timber. Um, for example, I'm there we go. And we'll do this edge here. So, I mean, yeah. It'll definitely so that's not gonna that's you're not gonna lose grip with jimping like that. That that's almost like a saw. This is pretty cool. Now, so this thing has a lot of really good, excellent things going for it. Um, as you see in the slicing, the cutting action, you find it's really good. The jimping is, I mean, that's a solid grip. That's not coming off. My thumb is not coming off that jimping. And if it did, it would take a bit, of, it would take a fair bit of skin away because those are sharp. Um, the only issues that I've had with this knife, really, there's one design thing about it that makes it a little difficult to live with. Now, I don't have a really expensive sharpening system. I have a, I've got a Lansky. And, you know, most people say, well, you know, if you get a Lansky, you need to get something else. Okay, well, that's probably true. Um, but the Lansky works in a clamp system. And I know that a lot of higher end sharpening systems also use a clamp. And... The problem with this is, and I'll show you. So you have this bit of the front here, which is meant for pocket knives. And you see I've lined it with tape. But a little bit more there, Taz. More on. Push that up a bit. There's a stand. There it is. Okay. So, the only design flaw that I have with this particular knife is that this will not sit in this reliably at all. Um, this will not seat properly, and as you can see, there's a fair bit of wall. Now, it's not clamped down, granted, I know that. But, like, say, for example, if you have to put it in here, I think it's 12 mil um, in metric. I'm not sure, it's about a half inch in imperial. Um, there's not, because of the swedging, which is very attractive, it, it just won't sit in something like this. So if you got one of these and you want to get this knife, you're not going to be able to sharpen it with this. Okay. Now, I don't know if that extends to, like I said, the more expensive sharpening systems. Um, I don't, I don't know because I don't have one. However, I do have one of these. Now, with these... Sharpening this is not an issue. That's a straightforward issue. Now, usually what I do is I clamp this end down to the workbench. And you just hold it straight up and down, and you do your 10 passes each side, and then you give it a buff. And here's a little um, sharpening that I made for uh, pocket knives. You got uh, fine on one side, coarse on the other. In between strops, between the two different sides, you have to wipe the blade off because you don't want to contaminate the compound. Um, that's the only design feature about this knife that I don't like. Now, all the rest of the problems that I have with this knife have to do with quality control. And that's with this particular issue. This is, that's with this particular knife. That's not necessarily the knife that you may have or your cousin has or the one that you saw on eBay. It's this one. So when I got this knife, 
there were some problems with it, and being the person that I am, rather than complain about it, I fixed it. Okay, uh, the first thing was there was no Loctite in this knife in any of these screws, which is okay. That's not that's really not acceptable. Um, and the only reason I noticed that was because the centering had wandered all the way over to one side after about the first day. And I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, this is a brand new knife. How's, how's that going to, why is that going to happen? Um, and that's when I um, undid the screws and realized that okay, there's no Loctite in there. And then just out of curiosity, I took these two out. There's no Loctite in there and then so forth and so on. Okay, again, that's a quality control issue and not the fault of the designer. Now, a couple other things with it was that this finger tool, I love this finger tool, but you'll notice here at the end of the plunge line to the beginning of the blade, this was 90 degrees and was sharp enough to start a fire with a ferro rod uh, when we went camping. So I used a ceramic rod and I just chamfered it. Okay, no problem. What I should have done was I should have sent it back to Mastrop and got a new one, but I didn't. That's my fault. Um, the lock bar tension on this is, is, is ramped up way too high. Um, and you'll notice that here on the inside, this is polished because when I got this, this edge was sharp and it actually cut a V into my thumbnail. Um, so, and the amount of tension required to shut this, it's, it's way too much. So I tend to do that. Um, to open and close it. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I think that was about it as far as the quality control issues. There's just a few things that weren't quite right. But again, that's to do with this knife and not the design, really. Um, I think it's a really good knife, and I I still love it. Um, some people have said that, uh, you know, if you were going to EDC this, you know, and you worked in an office and you whipped this out in the lunchroom, yeah, that might send the wrong signal. <laughs> it's a little aggressive. Um, but again, it entirely depends on where you work. I mean, if you work in a, you know, if you, if you work in a, in a woodworking shop or something like that and you pull this out, people aren't going to bat an eyelid because, you know, it, it, if you're working with uh, large machinery all day, this is not what I would call frightening. A table saw is what I would call frightening. Uh, you know, a, a large industrial bandsaw, that's what I call frightening. Um, but again, that's a personal thing. Um, so in the end, uh, yes, completely worth getting. Um, I know that the price on this has gone up. Uh, to 140 American dollars, and I think I bought this at the initial starting price, which I think was like about 100 or 110, I think, America, American dollars, which was roughly, what was it, about 160 or 170 Australian dollars or thereabouts. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know if other people experience those QC issues, but if they're widespread, then that's kind of an issue. Um, anyway, all right. Well, this has been me, um, and uh, that's my review on this particular knife. Um, I will be getting the, um, I did order the Drop Gint, which is also made by Fair and Forge and, and Lee. Um, I got the carbon fiber scale version because I've never had a pocket saber with carbon fiber on it before, and I just want to see. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, so, all right. Well, thank you very much, and I shall talk to you all later. As always, rate, comment, and subscribe down below. Be nice to each other, and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you. Bye.